Welcome to episode one of Learning Lua. Today we're going to be talking about the basics. Some history on the programming language Lua. Lua was born in 1993, and Lua can be used in Roblox, 5M, Love, and much, much more. It's not only for game development. You can do math equations, print things, and have a lot of fun with it. You can edit Lua in many programs. You can do it in Roblox Studio, Visual Studio Code, Atom, any text editor, or Notepad++. In this tutorial, we're going to be working on printing messages, setting variables, working with functions, simple math equations, if-then statements, and text inputs. So the first thing, we're going to uh, note down a little basic really quick. To make a comment, you do dash dash, and then your comment. So I we're going to be starting with printing. So I'm going to write printing. And these are not part of the code, but if you don't have the dash dash or hyphen hyphen, printing will give you an error and your code's not going to work. And to make uh, printing with several lines, you do dash dash and then bracket bracket and enter. And now your, um, your comment can last over several lines. So I do this to like, uh, put like credits to my work or tutorials instead of having to do that uh, so printing we're gonna start by writing print because this is saying that we're gonna do a print and then underneath our parentheses this is basically gonna print whatever inside of here and then uh, we're gonna put two quotation marks and inside of these quotation marks we're gonna put hello world and uh, since there's quotation marks, we're going to be outputting words. You can also print um, you can also print variables, but we're going to get into that later. So now there's two ways of running the code. We can do run file, and there we have hello world. And our second method we'll be getting into very shortly. Alright, now we're going to be starting with variables. So we start off our variable with local. This means that it's going to be stored inside of our script and not through server scripts. So we're going to name... Uh, for example, I'm going to name my variable hi, so it's local, in our script, hi, the name of it, and our variable is going to equal, so our variable is going to mean the word, so uh, quotation marks, and then hello, then exclamation point. You can put anything inside of these quotation marks. And you see how the hi is gray? It's not being used. It will light up once we use it. Another example of a variable, we can do local, and then let's say we want to put a number in our variable number and then we could have like the number two for example and then let's say we want to print our variable we can do print and then parentheses because we're printing whatever inside of our parentheses and then we're just going to type instead of typing hello instead of that we're just going to type hi and now it's going to print hello where hi is and then we can also do print and then number and now it's going to print hello and then 25. Now we're moving on to our functions. A function is a piece of code that can be ran whenever you ask it to. It won't run until you specify it to run. It can be run a limited amount of times. So we're going to do local because it's going to be stored inside of our code. And instead of print or a variable, we're going to type function and then the name of the function. So let's name this one howdy. And then two parentheses because we're not going to be using a subject. And then we're going to drop two lines and then type end. This means that we're going to end our function. So whatever inside of here is basically what our function is. So we can print. We can do anything we want. So print and then howdy partner. And now when so we run our function, we're going to print the words howdy partner. So now to run our function, we're going to do howdy. And then if we run the code, we will get howdy partner. And uh, it's not going to run if we delete howdy partner. And we can do this tons of times, and then we'll get four howdy partners. Now we're going to be working with simple math equations. This is my favorite part. There's going to be three ways to type a math equation. The first thing we can do is a local A. So we're going to make a variable. That's going to equal 1 and 2. So local A is 1. And then local B is going to equal 2. And now 
we're going to make a variable for our answer. And our answer is going to be 1 plus 2, so a plus b. So local answer equals a plus b. And we could do a plus b, a times b, a minus b, a divided by b. And we can do exponents and lots of more types of equations. And now that we uh, have our answer, we're going to do print and then answer. And now we have printed our answer, which is 3. Our second way that we can do this is we can just do print 1 plus 2. And then that's also going to equal 3. It's just that I don't prefer printing these because let's say you want to like change a number really fast. You'll have to manually change it every time you print these numbers. Our third and final way that we can do this is local. We can do x and y for this one. So local x is going to equal 1. And local y is going to equal 2. And then we can print x plus y. The shortest one is the second method, but they're all going to equal the same thing. As we can see, we have three threes. I would prefer to do the first method because you can change everything really fast. Like I can change my equation. Uh, so I can print my answer several times the same way instead of having to manually change it each time. And now we're going to be moving on the text input. The first thing is we're going to need to open up our command prompt, assuming that you have Lua installed and you're going to run this fine. And right now we're under uh, my user directory, so I'm going to open up my file explorer. And here we have our directory that we want. We're going to need to go to our directory that has our file in it, so then we can run the file from command prompt so we can type in our info. So I uh, am currently where I want to be, so I can copy this command and we're going to use cd so cd stands for change directory so cd and we're going to type in the directory i want and since i have cd twice we're just going to have cd once and now we're under lua now that we're in the directory we want we're going to do lua because we're using lua and then lua tutorial one dot lua this is now we're going to run it and here we have our output that we wanted so now for text inputs, we're going to print a question. So we can print, what's your name? And then right after this, we're going to do backwards slash n. This means that we're going to drop a line. So it's going to print one text of line, and that's going to drop it for us. And now to uh, get our name, we're going to do, we're going to create a variable named our name. And then we're going to equal io.read, parenthesis, then a semicolon. This is going to read our input and store it as our name. And now we can do print hi, and then we're going to do a space. And this part might get a bit confusing. So after we've printed our space, outside of our quotation marks, we're going to do dot, dot, and the two dots mean that we're adding on a string. So you can go from quotations to a variable to non-quotations, and it can go on and on. So it's going to be hi, and then our name, and then dot, dot, and then more quotation marks. And we're going to put an exclamation point in there. So now if we go to a command prompt and run that, it's going to ask what our name is, and I'll say Ethan. And it will say hi, Ethan. And there, you can ask other questions and store it. I've once made a story out of it asking you questions, and then it will store it as variables. Now we're on to if statements. So this can be like, if the number 1 equals the number 1, then we're going to print something. And if it does not equal 1, then we're going to print something else. So we can start with local. We can do uh, first, and then we're just going to set that to the number 6, and then local second so we're going to set two variables that are equivalent to six and now we're going to do if this is saying if first then then we're going to do equal equal this means equivalent if we do one equal sign it's going to think as a variable or something else so if first is equivalent to second and then we're going to do then and now that we're going to drop a line we're going to print uh, we can just print correct. 
and then we're gonna go back and then else and then we're gonna print not correct and then we're gonna end it just like how we ended our function so we're gonna do end and now if we run it it will say correct so now if we run it it's gonna say correct but then let's say we can change it to nine so if first is equivalent so six is equivalent to nine we run it it's gonna say not correct we can do unequivalent so it'd be a squiggly and then equal and it's gonna be correct because six is not equivalent to nine and then we can do less than so if six is less than nine it's correct or it could be greater than nine and then we can do less than or equal to nine and then it will output the same exact things now that we've finished this tutorial we're gonna do a challenge so what you're gonna do you're going to make you're gonna make a sales tax calculator so what you're gonna do is you're gonna set a variable for the price and the tax rate and then you're gonna make a variable that does the math and then it will output the pr the price without the tax the price with the tax and the amount of tax included I'll give you a few minutes and then I'll show you what I got so here's what I got I set a variable for our price tax rate and our price is twenty dollars so our tax rate in Michigan it's six uh, it's six percent and we're gonna calculate our tax by uh, multiplying 20 by 0 0.06 which is 20 six 20 times six percent and then our total we're just gonna add our price to our tax rate and then it will print all of what we wanted it to print so we have our starting price twenty dollars price with tax twenty one dollars and twenty cents our tax is a dollar twenty and our tax rate is six percent Thank you so much for following this tutorial. Please feel free to leave a like and subscribe with notifications on for our next tutorial, which will uh, grow in intensity. Uh, please practice. Practice will get you a lot better. I've been doing Lua for a couple of years, and I've just been getting serious with it, and it's a lot of fun once you know it. If you want the code, it will be on my GitHub in the description, and please ask any questions in the comments. Have a nice day.